Hey guys, welcome back to Overblow's Cookhouse. Today we're doing, hands down, pretty close to my favorite thing to eat. That's gumbo. Now I grew up watching old Justin Wilson on TV. So I watch on the PBS and come across and I sit there and just gaze and wonder at this man cooking and telling stories. And I said, I might do that one day. Well, I'm sort of doing that now. So let's get to it. So I got me about a pound and a half on Dewey sausage here. A fire pan, good and high little olive oil. Olive oil's got flavor to it, so I'll use it. Get our sausage going. Now, sometimes people do a chicken and sausage gumbo. They just go ahead and put the chicken and sausage over in the pot and basically let it stew. I like to add a little flavor and let it brown up a little bit. Caramelize those sugars inside the sausage and a little chicken skin by frying it up a little bit first. And then we take a little white wine, wash the pan out with it, and use that and to the pot too. A little more flavor is always better. Alright. Splatter on me. There we go. Okay, so we can look at this how these are 100 done. We just want to get a little color on them. And we got some four chicken thighs here. And we're going to put them after here to build that flavor up. There's plenty of salt in this sauce, so you don't have to add nothing to it right now. All right, you guys, four bone-in skin on chicken thighs here. Now this oil's hot. Be careful when you lay it, lay it away from you. Don't splash up too much. Put the skin side down first. Now, I'm going to use a skin to try to render as much that chicken smolts off of it as I can. But before I serve it, I'm going to take these chicken thighs out in that pot after they've been stewing in that gumbo for a while. I'm going to take the bone out, take a tin skin out, and that meat's just going to fall apart inside the gumbo. You don't have to take too long. Main cooking's done in the pot. Like I said, we're doing this just to get flavor started. Alright. We got some color on these chicken thighs here. We'll put them over. Looks good. We'll turn it up our sausage. Now these aren't cooked all the way through, but since they're going to be sharing the same pot here in a little bit, you need to get to worry about cross contamination. Put the off our cooked up here. Come on, come on, get out of the pot. You too. That's the color we got. Now, you can see all these brown bits here. I mean, on Dewey and that chicken thighs. Wash it up. So I have me a, about a cup of Pinot Grigio white wine right here. And I'll pour it in. Scrub about this pot. The tunnels here. Add before you get all that flavor. Yeah, look at that. Good way to keep your pots clean too. Why throw away flavor down? All right, right? Okay. A little bit. All right. So we're gonna set this to the side. And I got a little bit of room made up in a pot back here. We'll pull it over here. We're gonna get our vegetables in here. Everything cooked up. Get some chicken broth into it. Get some seasonings. Get this gumbo finished up for too long. Alright, we got this roux heated back up. It's a chocolate roux. Now, typically you cook your roux at a lower temperature until you get some experience with it. I got a little more experience, I've got it up to higher temp. But also, now that it's up to temp, it's cooked through, and we're adding our vegetables in. 
That'll keep your root from scorching. So I got me a cup of green pepper. I'm doing this is the uh, Trinity. That's green pepper. A cup of celery. And a cup of diced onion. In the case, I'm just going to have all three in. You see in here, basically cut new vegetables and all that root we made up. That's when we start adding our seasoning. Now, with root being the base of the season, you get that good nuttiness that you're wanting to work gumbo. I like to add a little pre made. This is actually a swamp venom with the Dizzy Pig Barbecue Company. This is their form of Cajun seasoning. I really like it. It's got really good heat to it. You can find that online in certain retail stores. But be careful with it. It just got some spice, especially if you're. Dining with folks who are partial on the ways of the heat. I'm a so fan. But we start slow. We build up from there. We'll taste as we go. Now it's got a good little salt in it. It's going to help leach out some of the liquid from these vegetables. Help them soften up. We're going to let this cook just a few minutes. So at this point, that tip ain't going to bother it, ain't going to burn anything. Just keep it stirred up. Be fine. Now, so far, I'd say it's probably a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of season we put in. Now, you'll notice in this gumbo, there's not going to be yolk. So, so, well, it's gumbo, it should be a smoke print. Well, not necessarily. Some people don't like a sliminess of okra itself is known to have. Personally, I can eat boiled okra. So much bold okra, I can't keep my socks on. But some people ain't like me. So we use gumbo out of here, and we use a filet powder. That's ground sassafras leaves. That's why I have a little thickening, a little flavor. So it's basically a filet gumbo. See that's going on now. We're going to add in that chicken. That sausage we cooked up. Right in here. And so once the chicken's cooked through, we're gonna pull the bones and the skin out. Come on. You don't want to go with the pot. There we go. Because there's nobody else to chew on the rubbery skin. But we do want it for that chicken fat that's on there. Amen. Put this sausage in. Stir. Grab that frying pan. We had all the leavings. We what? Rendered down with uh, rendered down. We washed them with some Pinot Grigio. So we uh, got all that good flavor. We see a couple little bits in that pan. Scrape it out. There we go. One little bit. Okay. Stop that heat a little bit. And we can get some chicken broth on here. A couple quarts of it. Glug, glug, glug. We'll start with one here and see what it looks like. Well, some people say just add water, but if I gotta add liquid, I'm gonna add liquid that has a flavor. Go down. So, all as possible, go with chicken broth, chicken stock, seafood stock, depending on what kind of gumbo you make. And I think later on we're gonna make y'all seafood gumbo down the line, and it's gonna have. Goker in it, oysters, and shrimp, gumbo crabs in there. It's going to be a fine time. Yeah, I think we could use just about a, another half quart. We'll have to let this cook now. Bring it to a good simmer for at least an hour. Yeah, should do her. 
two more. Let me just swap them. I like being paid to talk about Swamp Venom. It's just one of my favorite seasons. I think you should try it. And you'll get the same flavor profile. I'm going for in this one. Give this a stir. Put a lid on here and let this simmer. Go back and check everybody out. About an hour or so. Gumbo, basically, the longer you cook it, the flavor it is. Justin Wilson always said, Next day's mo better. That is true. We we'll eat some of this tomorrow, so I'm gonna be happy, happy, happy doing it. We'll see you back when this is cooked up for a bit. All right, it's been about an hour now. This gumbo's come together. I pulled that chicken out, pulled the bones and the chicken skin. You can see it's pulled apart there. If you could smell what's coming up as I stir this pot, you wish you was here too. So I'm going to give us a little taste. Now, i got me a little rice cooked up already. So you see there, heading towards the camera. Spooning out some of this gumbo. Mm -hmm. Some broth here. Now, I told you it was filet gumbo. So got me some filet powder. I'm going to sprinkle a little on top. That's going to help thicken and season at the same time. Not too much. Come on there. Give that a stir in. I see that looking pretty good. I'm starting to burn my mouth here. I'm going to give this a taste of that sausage. A little chicken. I'm going to give this a taste. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, that's good. I guarantee that Justin Wilson will say. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today on Buzz Funkhouse. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell down in the corner so you know when new stuff's coming out. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and look in the description below for the ingredient list for this dish. We'll see you next time.